Here we are in uh, Ovile. 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 Yeah, with, with Caroline, and she lives here in Champagne, and it's a real privilege to be able to walk among the vines. Um, tell us, Caroline, what, where are we? We're sort of centrally located, aren't we? Yeah, we are literally on the outskirts of Ovile. Here's a, a big vineyard, one of the most beautiful vineyards in Ovile, um, which is completely terraced. It's owned by Moet. It's an old vineyard. The fruit very often goes in Dom Perignon, even though. You know, officially the, the story is that they only put Grand Cru, but you know they also put a little bit of Ovilier because obviously it was made here. There's also some fruit of the other side of Ovilier on the other side of the mm. hill that goes in, because Moet has a lot of vineyards on the other side of the hill. Just there, right? just there you see the church uh, of the Abbey. The church of the Abbey, where church Dom Perignon Abbey, is? Where Dom Perignon is buried in it's the church, buried, yeah. and you know, the Abbey where he used to be. Um, you were explaining about the steepness of the slopes here. Yeah. Uh, what, why is that significant to Champagne, at least in general? Well, 66% of, um, of, of the vines in Champagne are planted on the slopes, and it's extremely significant, obviously, for the exposure, because we are the most northern Appalachian in France, um, so we need to basically have a good exposure. Um, we have a huge problem in Champagne with uh, erosion. Uh, that's why some of the vineyards, like this one in particular, is terraced. See, it's basically it's been done in a terrace because the slope obviously is very steep, so the the rows are horizontally rather than vertically. If we look behind us there. I don't know if you can Over see there, it. Yeah. Uh, you will see like a ren there. That's all vertical. So that all goes vertical. from top to the bottom. Okay. Um, you know these vineyards. They are at least 15 percent. The slopes are at least 15 percent for most places. Um, and you know it's something that is quite quite typical here. Same as you know the dense plant planting. So Ten thousand um, vines per hectare, or something like that. Or eight to ten. I actually don't know the exact amount of plants, but it's a lot. It's a lot, yeah. I thought it was twelve thousand. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, you're I maybe right. Yeah. 12, <laughs> but I'm not sure. Well, Kaiser's uh, going off again. We had, <laughs> we had a great time today. Uh, we're having a great time, and uh, thanks a lot for that that uh, talk about the vines and, the, and having a lot of fun. So, cheers. Bye. Bye. So, Vincent, we're we're trying a uh, two thousand. Four, the, it's just been released. What makes it a classic vintage, in your opinion? Yes, uh, yeah. I think that yeah, it's it's 2004 is classic vintage, but more than classic, I would say uh, symbiotic. I like to to use this word with Richard, symbiotic vintage, because it's really the wine itself is really the the explanation, the illustration of uh, the climatic year. Uh, uh, that means that we didn't. Uh, do so much in terms of uh, uh, winemaking decision uh, in order to convey uh, what the nature gave us in the direction of Dom Perignon. You know, in another world, I can I can I can say that uh, the, the the nature gave us naturally what we what we what we need what we needed uh, to to explain and to exp to express the style of Dom Perignon in 2004. Uh, so it was very very simple for us. Uh, it was a, uh, just a question of, of humility to understand that in this year, 2004, uh, the, the balance and the classic balance between richness and freshness, uh, between intensity and, 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 and a lightness, delicate aspect of Dom Perignon was naturally present from the beginning in the vines, in the plots, uh, and in the grapes, which is very different from Osri. Three, uh, we had to really to fight a lot to go very deep in the understanding of the personality of the of the trajectory uh, of all three during the vegetative period during the harvest in order to, to take the good decision of picking pressing uh, wine making in order to really to bring uh, the good thing the, the the interesting point of of uh, of all three of the grape, the, the good quality of, of the grapes of Austria three in the direction of, uh, of, uh, of Dom Perignon's time. Yeah. Vincent, yes. tell us about these two reds. I mean, t t Vincent is coming back on the video. I'll tell you, <laughs> yeah, he's back. <laughs> I'm back, I'm back. 2002, 2003, I mean, 2003 seems more profound and sort of baritone and rich, yeah. Yeah. while 2002 is a longer, preciser wine. When to drink these? <laughs> No, tomorrow and after tomorrow, I would say. No, I mean, 
the two of them, uh, I think, are very interesting for different uh, things. Today, when we are releasing our wine, that means that we think that they, they are offering, they are proposing a balance, an harmony, uh, an energy, an intensity which is good to understand and to, to appreciate today. But on the other hand, the two of them have the potential to express and develop uh, certain personality complexities through, through the time. Uh, the difference is that the, their trajectory through the time will be different, uh, of course. And like you were saying, Austria today is showing more maturity because the, 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 the aromatic, the grapes we, are, we, we picked in Austria were uh, more uh, riper than uh, in terms of, uh, of aromatic than in 2002. Uh, uh, I think that Austria, the aromatic of Austria, has reached a kind of uh, peak of maturity and will be stable through the time. When the O2 is going to transform itself, itself on the aromatic. Huh? Uh, on the other hand, I think that the O2 is very extended on the palette today. When O3 is more profound and will develop the extension through the time on the palette. Huh? So, two different trajectories for two wines which are coming from very different climates and weather conditions. A 1969 Enotech Dom Perignon. Enotech Dom Perignon. You notice the gold lettering, which means it's uh, the third issue mm. of this fantastic wine. Um, 36 years? Only in the bottle, 